Newton met with Apple S. Cook ahead of first tax plan release. Treasury Secretary Stephen Newton met with chief executives including Apple Incorporated S. Tim Cook, Pfizer Incorporated S. Ian Reid and Barclays PLC S. G. Staley in the weeks before the Trump administration released its first outline for the Republican tax overhaul that passed in December. The Treasury Department disclosed Newton's calendar for the first half of 2017 on its website Wednesday. The schedule shows who met with Newton, but not what topics they discussed. Newton, who played a major role developing the administration's tax plan, had two phone calls with Cook in early April and then met with him in person on April 18, according to the calendar. Newton met with Reid on April 4 and Staley a day later. In the weeks before the April 26 tax outline was released, he also met with Mark Fields, then the leader of Ford Motor Company, MasterCard Inc. S. J. Bonga, Best Buy Co. Inc. S. Hubert Jolie, and Jean Lemire, chairman of BNP Paribas S.A. The initial version of the tax plan called for cutting the corporate rate to 15% from 35% and it also called for a one-time tax on U.S. companies' offshore earnings, without specifying the rate. The tax bill President Donald Trump signed in December set a 21% corporate rate and a levy of 15.5% on cash held overseas. Less liquid assets overseas are taxed at 8%. Apple, which has the largest offshore cash pile of any U.S. company, stands to benefit the most from a lower tax rate on its overseas earnings. Under the old system, U.S. companies faced the corporate rate of 35% on their foreign earnings but they could avoid paying the tax if they kept those earnings abroad. Apple said it would pay about $38 billion in taxes as a result of the new tax law, which imposes a mandatory levy on accumulated foreign income. Pfizer said Tuesday it had scored a nearly $11 billion gain from the tax revamp largely because of the changes to how overseas earnings are taxed. Newton S. Calendar, which showed appointments from February 14th through June 30th, listed more than 40 meetings or phone calls with corporate executives and about 80 with foreign economic officials.